Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to tonight's space. Um, if you can hear me clearly, just uh, kindly indicate, use the emoji um, comment section and indicate you can hear me very clearly. You're welcome to tonight's space and um, today we have an interesting topic. But let's give like a minute to have our speakers and other people come on board and then we'll get started. So um, tonight's topic is like something that's really, really super, um, super interesting for me. I'm curious to really hear what the uh, speakers have to say this evening about this interesting topic because me, I'm here to learn. I'm always here to learn from our amazing speakers. We have um, an amazing lineup of speakers who have been in this uh, this web trace space for the longest of times and i'm so sure they're coming on board with lots of um they're coming on board with a lot of experience to share so just right about now if you're in this space right now just simply copy this the link to this space and go to your, your your whatsapp status go to everywhere go to your um telegram your telegram um story and share it right there and invite your friends because it promises to be quite educative for us it's an interesting topic solving funding challenges with web3 um we have um we have our speakers uh senator Hayen, we have uh Guillermo stanley we have lemoy Aban, we have um lucky wakwe these are like amazing speakers that we have lined up so you are very much welcome every one of you this evening so i want to confirm again that you can hear me clearly so that we can get um started so um can you guys hear me Please confirm, please confirm. Use the emojis, use the comment section. I can hear myself, but I want to really be sure that I'm not I'm not alone yet. All right, okay. Uh thank you, Senator. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So uh, without further ado, without further ado, I believe other people like are going to like join us as they come on board and um and then we have three of our four speakers right here, right now. So you all are welcome. So uh, let's make a big welcome to Mr. Golomo Stanley, Mr. Senator Hayen, and Mr. Lemuel Atman. Why we wait for Mr. Loki Owakwe to join us. Now, these are like, these are amazing speakers. I've seen them build products, build brands in this Web3 space, in the Nigerian Africa Web3 space. And where we are as a country in the web three space, they all played their part. I've watched them play their part in the web three space in Africa. So um, it is really going to be insightful and um, educative to hear what they have to share with us this evening. So um, Mr. Gonomo uh, Stanley and Mr. Lemuel Aban, they are both co-founders of Rota Cash and if you are here right now, just make sure you go to um, Valico Pin Post and engage with that post there. That is partly sponsored by Rota Cash. So that's going to give you access to um, accessing all our job readiness courses at Valicop. So make sure you engage with that. Of course, there's a, there's a tight airdrop to it. I know what airdrop means in the crypto space. So um, engage in it and get ready to be eligible to be a part of the Valley Cup Premium Community. So, um, Mr. Senator Inhenye is the uh, one of the biggest NHS to stay in the background and then see what he's doing in the space and, you know, in, engineering so many push that is putting Nigeria on the limelight in the Web3 space, bringing, um, you know, putting more stability to the regulations and all of those things that is putting Nigeria on the map. In the web space. So, um, without further ado, um, I'm now after some things. This just quite right now, but I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves so that we can get started this evening. So, thank, um, thank you so much, uh, our highly esteemed speakers, for honoring this 
invitation this evening. So, um, Mr. Golomo, kindly introduce yourself to us, then Mr. Senator, then Mr. Lemuel. All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I hope you all can hear me very clearly. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a pleasure being around with you all. My name is Golomo Stanley, and um, I'm the co-founder and um, the CEO of um, Rota Cash. Um, it's my pleasure being here this evening to share some very insightful discussion around uh, Web3 and how uh, Web3 is enabling funding for startups and um, businesses around the world. So it's a pleasure being here with you all. Thank you very much. And we hope to have a fruitful evening. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Um, let's hear from you, Mr. Senator. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for bringing me here, um, Value Corp and uh, Ruta Cash. Um, I'm very delighted to be here with you guys uh, this evening or this afternoon, wherever you are in the, in the world. Uh, my name is Senator Hayen. I'm um, the, currently the lead partner at Infusion Lawyers, which is a law firm uh, that services um, innovators in the Web3 space, uh, as it were. I'm delighted to be here, particularly because this is the community I've seen grow over the years. And um, we hope that um, by solving the funding challenges in Web3, we're able to add even more value to growth. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, um, Mr. Lemuel. Okay, I think I'll be um, um, I'll be speaking briefly for him. He's um, trying to get up online. Um, we hope he'll be coming up. He'll be coming up with his um, his account. So just um, give him some time. He'll be up soon. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, so um, without further ado, then, um, so uh, the whole funding is one very, very vital conversation that needs to be had in this web space, right? Um, because of the way the blockchain is, um, is it's built, because of the, uh, the whole concept around Web3, it sort of presents funding opportunities to anyone and to everyone. But then... Um, but then I want to, I want, I want, um, uh, okay, this, this is going to Mr. Senator now. Uh, I think every one of us here can share also. I want you to share with us, like, how has Web3 transformed the traditional, like, the already existing traditional funding models? You know, uh, in the traditional world, we have different ways. If you're starting a business, uh, one of the popular ways to go is to go to go and get a loan in the bank. You know, all the plenty, plenty drama is attached to that. And then, or maybe get a direct funding for a family member that is rich or uh, that doesn't always like sometimes go very well. And then, you know, there are several options uh, like in the traditional world, which also has its limitation. But somehow, Web3 has transformed that. So um, would you share with us um, how Web3 has really transformed funding from the traditional method. Thank you very much. Uh, that's a very, uh, very good question. Um, over the years, uh, we have seen how uh, Web3 or Web3.0 has evolved from um, Web1 or Web2. And essentially, it's all about decentralizing um, platforms or services or solutions. And when it comes to decentralization, of course, it means that those traditional structures uh, that we conventionally re uh, uh, rely on for access to services or even funding begins to um, break down. You then have access in a manner that is more decentralized, more community-driven, um, even more transparent as a matter of fact. And when that happens, a lot can be um, unbundled from there. Um, looking at the traditional uh, funding space, Web 1, Web 2, of course, it's always been about being able to either get um, funding from um, your own savings, that's what we call bootstrapping, 
or uh, perhaps you are able to get funding from um, clothes, uh, you know, people who, whom you know, people you have network with, right? And, and these days we talk about angel investors, uh, venture capital, some persons are lucky to get government grants, and, um, and then there are those who, 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 who go through IPOs, initial public offering by which you're able to raise funds in a stock exchange. These are traditional ways of raising funds that um, they have their limitations, as you rightly said. Um, first of all, there is no global access. You know, not everyone in the world can participate because all of these um, structures, traditional structures I've mentioned, from venture capital to angel investments to government grants, um, uh, having high POs on stock exchange, these are not very globalized in nature. So there is uh, limited uh, participation in terms of access, that's one. Um, secondly, there's also usually the uh, issue of um, liquidity. So usually you, when you have a community being able to participate in, in a, using the network effect, you know, in any... Um, uh, innovation that they're able to grow, uh, it, it gives you that liquidity um, compared to being restricted um, in the conventional ways that we've been raising over the uh, raising funds over the years. And what are these um, new funding um, sources really for Web3? Uh, we have seen, especially since um, say 2014, 2015, um, we've seen how a lot of startups, you know, startups, innovations in the blockchain space um, tr have tried to innovate in the manner that they would be able to solve issues across sectors. But for, having access to funding has been pretty difficult. And um, luckily or thankfully, sometime, be, I think between 2016, 2017, that idea of initial coin offering, ICOs, um, became a bit prevalent, especially towards the end of 2017, beginning of 2018. There were a lot of ICOs in the space. And with using initial coin offering structure, a lot of um, startups or innovators were able to get access to funding in a way that has that isn't pre, uh, that has never been done before. It was unprecedented. The way that people were able to get access to funding from even people they know nothing about. This this is just um, people leveraging the power of blockchain to be able to access funds globally, and that caused a lot of disruption in the space. I have to say, although there has been both positives and negatives. And uh, based on the statistics that we have now, you know, with the benefit of insight, um, some of the ICOs or most of those ICOs um, that were launched back then for, say, for various blockchain or other crypto-related projects, um, we've seen that many of them failed eventually. But that doesn't rub off the fact that um, this is a new way of raising funding that perhaps needs to be built upon. Apart from ICOs, uh, I think uh, over, over the years, we've also seen the gradual evolution of, um, um, uh, what's it called now? I, I, you call them uh, IEOs, right? So it, you call initial exchange offering. That tried to solve the issues with ICOs because um, ICOs were so, so essentially decentralized that um, it, it relied so much on two things, the community, first of all, the confidence of the community in the project, as well as the trust of the team members of that project. Now, ICOs faced a lot of issues because it appeared that certain team members of projects or founders were not trustworthy enough. And so they messed up a lot of opportunities and abuse the trust that the decentralized community had in them. So centralized exchanges like Binance, uh, BitGet, Luno, and some of these other guys, you know, decided to um, find a solution to that by saying, all right, if you do not trust the founders, at least you can trust us because we're a centralized exchange 
and we'll be able to um, um, let you, you will be, we will be able to leverage our trust to ensure that others have access, um, they are able to raise funding and, and all the rest. Well, as it will turn out, uh, initial exchange offerings did not solve the issues that we also had there. But before going into all that, I'd uh, just like to point out that initial exchange offerings, uh, to some extent, was able to manage um, all of the problems around funding using ICOs. Uh, but eventually, it also had to give way to um, the next one, which is the initial um, uh, a DEX offering. The idea of initial DEX offering was to now truly decentralize access to funding by not relying on um, the likes of Binance and the rest of them who are centralized entities. Um, now you'll be able to just leverage the power of smart contracts and the blockchain to be able to ensure that all of those trust issues are dealt with. Um, um, and, and, and indeed, I think this was needed at, at that time because um, we started seeing gradually how some of these um, centralized exchanges who offered initial um, um, exchange uh, uh, platforms for, for fundraising, they started charging high fees, a lot of high fees. Um, some of them also started getting into shady deals, um, enabling or facilitating questionable um, pumping of certain coins and certain cashing outs that were pretty questionable as well. And all that pretty much messed up um, the idea of IEOs. And then, de that, then we had the in initial DEX offering. How has that gone as well? Um, it's been not too bad because for the first time we are seeing true transparency. We're seeing um, all those things we talk about, um, um, the advantages, right? Or strengths of blockchain, security, traceability, transparency, and all the rest of them. We see it all in IDOs. Uh, but again, IDOs too get to struggle when it comes to pre uh, offering itself as access to funding for Web3 uh, for certain reasons, one of which is that um, um, this time now it is not the technology, but also the players themselves. So we've seen um, certain projects being launched, you know, or funded using IDOs ideals that, I mean, projects that appear not to have um, their fundamentals rightly done. So you have weak projects, questionable projects, sometimes um, purely scam projects, uh, sometimes projects that just want to um, take advantage of certain um, noise in the markets and then cash out as well. So that is what is wrong with ideals currently. And I believe that those who have been able to play using IDOs, those who have been able to build teams you can trust and projects you can, you can really trust to, to solve solutions in the space, I believe those ones are making the best use of, um, um, of that um, platform. And it, it's, it's, for me, I think it's a great opportunity that we have you know, in the Web3 space, being able to access funding in a manner that is globalized, in a manner that is community-driven, in a manner that is traceable. It's a great advantage because it gives you access to something that, that, is, that has never been done before in a manner that uh, uh, is unprecedented. And it's just left for the players in the space to self-regulate a, a bit more, become a bit more responsible about using the technology so that we don't give blockchain and crypto a bad name in the space. So that's, that's much of it in terms of access to funding, from ICOs to IEOs to IDOs. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Senator, for uh, sharing that insight with us. Um, then, you know, while you were talking, I, I just thought of on top of tip of my head and about crowdfunding crowdfunding um, in the Web3 space too. Just a very short uh, addition to that. Um, what would you also say about that? You've talked about the IEOs, the ICOs and IDOs. And then we also have crowdfunding in the Web3 space. I think that's like, uh, I don't think it's, it's such a, like an old idea. Like it's a very recent idea in this space. So 
Can you throw a little bit more light on that? All right. Thank you very much. Um, when it comes to crowdfunding, if we look at all of these structures in terms of the ICO, the IEO, and the IDO, you realize that it is essentially crowdfunding as well because um, look at the initial coin offerings. It is you leveraging on the power of the crowd. The crowd is bringing their funding together to get you funded. The only thing that has changed is that they are relying on buying a certain coin at certain value, expecting that should the project um, be successful, the value of the coins will appreciate big time, and then they are able to get their uh, returns from there. That's some form of crowdfunding. Um, if you go to initial exchange offering as well, which is uh, powered by centralized exchanges, you also found that the centralized exchanges are not actually the ones bringing the funding to you, not at all. They are also relying on the crowd that they are able to pull using their, um, their popularity and all of that, using their network and the existing user base to ensure that the crowd pulls funds for you. So that's also a form of crowdfunding down to IDOs. As a matter of fact, IDOs are essentially purely 100% crowdfunding because this time um, you have um, less uh, of um, centralized or little or no centralized forces in that uh, matrix. All you have is um, smart contracts and um, you know the project bring is presented to you. It's left for you if you want it or you don't want it. There's no one trying to manipulate anything in the background except um, the manipulations have been integrated into the smart contracts. For those who, who, who get into such crowdfunding at that stage, that's why it's always advisable for you to study um, these white papers, be able to also look at um, the tokenomics and the rest of them so that you're sure that whatever happens, right, um, you want to be sure that the, the founders, for instance, are not the ones who essentially are holding most of the coin. Because if that is the case, it means that something bad may happen. Whether they intend to do bad or not, it is inherently bad to have the um, coins being um, circulated in a manner that it is centered around the founders or certain few persons and all that. As, as the more decentralized it is, the better. So it is all essentially crowdfunding. Um, in the traditional space, there's also the idea of crowdfunding. For instance, I know that um, um, many countries decided to open up that traditional space to crowdfunding when they realized that if they didn't open that door very soon, um, non-traditional players might, might just run down the traditional um, funding system. So they had to accommodate that. I remember that in Nigeria, for instance, there was the crowdfunding rules that was um, introduced by the Securities and Exchange Commission, I think sometime in 2021, just to be able to accommodate the idea of crowdfunding. So for the first time at the time, Nigeria was able to accommodate crowdfunders, saying, okay, right now, we want to ensure that we can, we can bring trust into the system so we don't have issues around um, consumer protection and investor safety which are the two things that essentially government is always concerned about. And that is an area I also think that Web3 needs to pay a little more attention because at the end of the day, the solution is not the technology. The technology is only a tool. The solution is really uh, about the community and solving problems. That's where the real thing is. Anything built on how popular or how fascinating uh, and all that a technology is, it's not going to be sustainable. It will just come and pass, and it won't, it won't really um, 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 be able to pass the test of time. So it's all crowdfunding in this Web3 space. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, Right about why, why you were sharing, um, Mr. Lemuel and uh, Mr. Loki, 
Wakwe joined us. So you're welcome, Mr. Lucky. You're welcome, Mr. Lemuel. Um, let me just give Mr. Lucky some time to introduce himself and Mr. Lemuel too. Mr. Lucky. All right. Hi. Good, um, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Lucky Wakwe, and I'm the founder of Sabi Groups. Uh, basically, we are a Web3 um, focus company, and we are primarily within the blockchain payment space. Uh, basically, we operate out of six countries as of today and um i've been in the blockchain space for quite some some time now more like um a veteran within the a blockchain space within africa uh per se and um it's nice to also be on the panel with my president senator thank you thank you so much sir it's nice to also have you here too um mr lemuel Yes, um, good day everyone. My name is Mr. Lemuel. I'm the co-founder at Otakash Finance. We are one of the um, key players in um, the Web3 space. We've actually built um, farm chain finance and then, you know, um, by voting to um, a multi-purpose um, decentralized cooperative and from there, challenges we face and uh, help us to fight by voting to products without cash finance. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, before you drop the mic, um, just uh, yourself and Mr. Stanley has been building Rota Cash, um, and it was you know, previously in Web two, and you transitioned into Web three. So. Now, with the and what you're building is like a way, uh, so what we call, um, let's say, a draw in Web3. So, sort of a draw in Web3, like, so sort of crowdfunding, how people like raise funds together and, um, and they're able to fund their plans and stuff. So, what would you say is the key um, advantages of using Web3 technologies for funding? You know, Mr. Senator already, like, you know, shared, gave us insight into some of those things, but um, you can elaborate on that. Thank you. But the, the essence why we look at um, you know, Web 2 and Web 3 and perhaps Web 1, it's one key thing is for inclusion, financial inclusion, of which the uh, traditional financing system is lacking and there is a lot of gap, shortfalls. And so we look at the opportunities and the pain point of end users is really those who are cut off within the stream. And then when we saw the opportunity that when Rota Cash came in, rotating savings circles. Basically, the idea is instead of going for, um, you know, struggling um, for getting funded from the traditional system, of course, a lot of stress, a lot of requirements, of which a lot those who are in bank could not actually get access to search. So we came into that pain point is create solution to that. Even though there are existing solutions on Web2, the market, the, the gap, the market is so large, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa. But Web3 actually enables us to look at global perspective because we have those in Asia and some other regions that are cut off from the mainstream finance system. And because Web3, being without borders can actually help us to be able to provide solution to such pain points. And so that's what we are actually been building for a while. And then we are not ignorant of the fact that there are a lot of why trying to, you know, go decentralized. There are challenges, like just like is mentioned by Senator. That's why we are also on top of the game. Uh, providing solution to these challenges. One of such is the issue of, you know, you know, bringing up something that may cause problem to users, like the issue of um, identity, issue of um, security, issue of ensuring that what we are doing is sustainable. So we came up with solutions that we could offer so that we make the system very, very reliable very, very sustainable in that area. So that's what we've been building. And 
interestingly, just like we we try to you know introduce KYC to ensure user safety on our platform, because relatively on Web two, we kind of you know try to control funds. Of course, it's just very relative, very very minor. But on Web three, I've got the opportunity to go totally decentralized. In that case, we are not. Um, how will I put it? We are not custodians like the centralized exchanges. We are not custodians. Basically, it's peer to peer, wallet to wallet. But it's about A, B, C, D, E contributes this week or this month to wallet F, and then they take turns like that until the cycle is complete. So in that way, it saves the users, the end users, the cost of you know securing funding like in terms of loans with so much interest from the traditional financing system. And then it allows them not to like, you know, they get direct funded from peers. So it's kind of, it sounds like it's like social banking. So that's what we're building. So it's, it's a FinTech kind of social banking, but we, um, you know, deploy it on the Web 2, on the Web 3, on the Web 1. The main goal of, providing a um, sustainable solution for financial inclusion. Thank you so much, Mr. Lemuel. Thank you so much for sharing uh, that. Um, that's like really, really super cool because I, I understand how, um, you know, one of the things that Senator mentioned was the bootstrapping is one major way that we, when you want to start something right here in Nigeria, you first of all think about the money in your pocket and then think about where else you can get extra funds. And then, you know, uh, because I, I don't think raising funds in Nigeria, I don't know how, how it is as far compared to uh, other parts of the world. But then this is a solution. What Rodakash is doing is like one solution to all of those challenges. But then it's Web3. And it already has a challenge where many people are trying to trying to like understand what exactly is Web3 and how is that this really, really, really going to solve their problems. But I believe that we are getting there. So um, thank you again, Mr. Lemuel. Um, Mr. Lucky Wapwe uh, is the one person I've known for the longest time in this space. And um, you've been part of the, like I said, the DeFi system, different DeFi teams and all of that. So uh, could you share with us how DeFi platforms, how they play a role in funding in the web space, like funding initiatives in the web space? All right. Hey, thank you so much. And um, it's also a pleasure to speak with you. Um, so basically, in the area of uh, Web3 or in the de decentralized finance space, in terms of how to play a role for funding, I will just bring a very quick um, analogy. Um, looking at the popular company right now called Money Points, uh, which happens to be um, doing so well in terms of the numbers that we've seen publicly, I think um, the last record, the available record that um, that came out publicly says that they process somewhere about $12 billion um, I think in terms of um, the average monthly transaction. So just imagine whereby, um, as of today, for the founders of Money Point, um, which option would have been most ideal for them? Getting money from um, people who, where they have to let go some of their equity as it stands today, or getting money from the public, where all they just need to do is just um, probably tokenize their process and then give them interest. A lot of times people would say, tokenization does not work for everything. But I, I would say, even if we're to tokenize everything, it does not mean that the token can uh, or will be used within the ecosystem as a means of either covering transaction fees or as a means of utilizing that token within the ecosystem. It can just be a representation of value without necessarily you know, um, giving anybody direct equity in, in, into the company. Uh, DeFi actually made it possible in such a manner that the era of creating barriers for any um, for certain set of people as a result of um, them not meeting a threshold for the salary or a threshold for a category of lifestyle uh, by virtue of how much they earn um, were taken off. Uh, DeFi made it possible such that if what I'm capable of uh, doing as an individual is, let's say, $5, and somebody else can do $5,000, it doesn't matter. I should still be able to have a place on the table uh, for that particular valuable 
product or company. Um, without DeFi, it would have it would have been very difficult for a lot of persons to really partake in this new era of um, how uh, values or finance are being defined. Um, practically, um, at the early time or at the early um, stage of decentralized finance concept, a lot of persons, of course, both we had both the good and we had both the bad. A lot of persons who did participate in it, they saw great values in it, even though um, to a large extent they were shrouded with. Um, people who were utilizing them to take advantage of uh, uh, so many other people's ignorance. But if you look at it in terms of um, the real sense, it created an automatic value for um, a lot of persons. I was just discussing recently around uh, the impact of why, um, what they call them, PayPal have not really scaled through um, as it stands today, despite them having the resources and all that stuff. Uh, why would anybody not want to utilize PayPal-based solutions, even though they are like um, a pioneer in the area in the era of fintech or in the era of payment, um, as it's way as it's called today? But clearly, people are always concerned with where your rule seems to give certain privilege to certain persons and then discriminates um, against other people. Decentralized finance had made it possible in such a manner that even uh, valuable products that are now being built, whether it is in the case of that of Rota Cash, like what Rota Cash is currently doing in terms of um, transforming how um, what we call cooperative or what some people will call Isusu in some culture, for collectively pulling money together like a lot of our grandma and grandpa were doing back in the days. But even for grandmas and grandpa, if we were to try it in a traditional sense, it means so many people will, be, will not have the opportunity to participate or partake in it, either as a result of their geographic location or as a result of how far they are or as a result of not even knowing anybody um, around that particular uh, cooperative. But with the era of decentralized finance coming into play, it's making it possible in such a manner that even if I live in any part of the world and I'm seeing that this thing that this set of people are building or are trying to develop will become something of value in the future. As an individual, as a person, irrespective of my location, I should be able to participate, hopefully, uh, that I can take advantage of it. Um, people um, who heard or predicted the era of Tesla becoming great, um, some of them would have wanted to partake in it at the time. But because of the barrier of entry, a lot of persons probably lost valuable opportunities that probably they will never recall, they will never get again in their lifetime as a result of uh, them not see, uh, uh, seeing any platform or place where they can actually buy into Tesla at the time. Even, for example, me as a person, at the time when um, Tesla started, I, I foresaw or I, I predicted in my own um personal discussions with persons that this company would probably probably become a great company. But even if I I could say that it might be a great company at the time, if I'd even wanted to participate as somebody who's coming from Nigeria, likely it wouldn't have been easy for me in comparison to somebody who lives in America or who is from um, United States. So clearly, imagine if decentralized finance uh, is the thing as it were today. And Tesla, being what it is today, um, is built utilizing Web3 methodologies. It would have made it possible that even me, irrespective of where I was at the time, I could have participated and at least own a bit of Tesla today. So, so many other great companies will come, whether they're, they're launching primarily Wall Street or whether they're launching in Yaba Tech right? Um, not adding the concept of decentralized finance or adding the concept of Web3 into it in the course of or the process of raising funds might either limit the company in particular from getting the adequate or required funds. I might also put the company in loggerheads in terms of how they need to balance between shareholders every now and then. And might also create another limitations for entry to somebody who having understood that there's risk in investing, but they will not still be allowed to invest despite them understanding this risk. That's uh, one key important thing that even made me much more interested in, in the era of decentralized finance, which I had done a couple of work in some of the early uh, DeFi-related projects like Yen Finance, uh, basically at the time. And uh, these these are some key important um, points that ha that is making... Uh, DeFi or Web3 in general, um, a, a go-to solution for anybody who also wants to raise funds or who also wants to impact the world and ensuring that 
those who can can be part of it without too much barrier of entry. Of course, KYC is something people take seriously, but um, Web3 would make it a little sli slightly simplified in comparison to what we would have seen in, in the era of, or in the area of traditional finance. Thank you so much, Mr. Loki. Thank you. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Um, I, I'm just imagining like being, sorry, I hope I didn't just cut you off. Uh, no, no, that's fine. It's, it's cool. I'm, I'm good. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just imagining being able to like own a part of the like large corporations in the world just because um, DeFi can make that possible, you know, um, the reason why we are all here in this web space is because of the amazing, of course, we know there are challenges, we know there are still some like one or two limitations here and there, but we know that the possibilities are endless in Web3, right? It just simply removes all those walls, all those barriers that are so super existent or, you know, that cost some people off in the Web2. So um, thank you for like really sharing that with us. And I, I just hope we are taking some notes, and we're, the rest of us in the, uh, that are listening and seeing the reasons why we need to be a part of this, part of uh, bringing this, all this knowledge, this, ex this experience back home, so that, uh, because the more we learn about this, I know that education is one thing that really push adoption of this pastry system, you know, uh, Nigeria is picking up so fast, but we still have like a vast majority of persons who have like, you know, zero idea about all of this. That's even why we are, uh, we're going to launch some series on some educational series. We're calling to Web3 Validemi, where we are going back to the root to teach people these fundamental um, explanations about the space. Because I've, I've encountered several people who, they've been hearing about Web3. It sounds like lots of jargon to them. They don't, they don't understand it. They don't know what to do with it. So, but then when, when I explain to them, oh, this is like, oh, that's it, you know. So there's still lots of education that needs to go back. I mean, beyond, most of us are, we are, we are already talking about the big, big, big words, but so many persons like still need like, you know, the foundation. So I'm, I'm glad we are all having these conversations and we are sharing from our wealth of knowledge. So, um, yeah, so to uh, Mr. Stanley, Mr. Stanley, you've been building, uh, you've built, Farm, uh, farm chain, farm chain with uh, Salemwell, and also building Rotor Cash right now. So, and I, I know that building anything also with these challenges and is farmer. We've all like I'm sure everybody here, some one way or another, have been part of building from scratch or building from whatever level. So, what challenges or risk should entrepreneurs, uh, you know, small scale users, be aware of when using web funding options? We will say that. There are no like web three is like a smooth road, right? Um, I think Mr. Lucky mentioned we still have a little bit of this thing around uh, glitch around like the KYC because that's one thing that people seem to feel secure, right? They seem to feel secure. They seem to feel um, believe that I I know what I hear when it comes to crypto. The whole mindset around people has to have about the whole space. So, what are these challenges? or risk that they should pay attention to. Entrepreneurs, builders like ourselves, what should we pay attention to while we are, you know, trying to secure this funding through Web3? Mr. Stanley. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I would like to actually break it in parts. Uh, first of all, talking about the challenges, then talking about the risk. Uh, because these are two different ball games entirely, uh, especially for um, startups, entrepreneurs, builders, socially taking Web3 funding. Um, it's not um, quite an easy journey. It's quite a very challenging journey. Uh, we have projects who have been building for a long time and they're still trying to get access to funding through Web3 uh, still they've not been able to get access to such funding because there are a lot of protocols that still needs to be, that is still involved. Although um, you you do less work compared to um, getting financing from the Web2 web ecosystem, that is true VC funding, 
and um, all other forms of funding through the Web2 uh, ecosystem. Uh, but in the Web3, you do less paperwork, uh, but you do more of marketing. Um, you do more of showcasing your products, um, showing what you actually do. You, you must actually convince people because the Web3 ecosystem is very wide. Uh, we have people from different parts of the world who are actually looking for viable projects to put in their phones. There is serious funding. There is serious fund in the Web3 ecosystem. Serious fund. A lot of people have funds. Um, they're actually looking for good projects to put in their funds. Uh, they don't really need to know every details about the project, um, but the extent to which you're able to market your product, the extent to, to which you're able to build your community, then you'll be able to convince these persons that you're actually here for the business, you're actually here to do what you actually promise that you want to do. Then you have to go through the necessary process of raising your funds. There are various channels, like um, Mr. Senator have highlighted through the that is um, getting access through the uh, initially the ICO. We have the IEO, and uh, we have the IDOs. Uh, we have the launch pads. We have different forms, fair launch, and so on and so forth that we use in raising funds today. But it's not um, a magic thing. You don't just build your products and you just go and you just list on any of these um, um, decentralized exchanges and you just feel you could just raise funds like that. No, it's not done that way. Um, there still have to be some vetting processes that you must go through. Uh, if you really want to create credibility for your project, for your project, you must go through all of those processes. So these are challenging situations that every project must encounter. So you must be able to, you must be prepared in advance um, so that you'll be able to overcome those challenges as you move forward. Then for the risk, there are also great risks associated with um, raising funds from the Web3 ecosystem. Now, you, you, you might be successful in raising your funds, or oh, maybe you go through fair launch, uh, launch pad, uh, IEO, and whatever. Uh, you must also ensure that you have proper security measures in place. Uh, because today there are a lot of scammers out there. You might be building your community and you have a lot of spammers, scammers who come into your community. And if you are not careful, if you do not do the necessary, take necessary measures to protect your communities, your community members could be scammed. It's a very great risk. And you see people coming to the project, meeting, reaching out to the founders that they've been duped to some amount of dollars. This is, and only for you. This space was downloaded via spacesdown.com. Visit to download your spaces today. You find out that this, this money that these people put into a contract is not actually your contract. So there are these scammers who can clone your contract or fake out your contract. That is your, your smart, your project smart contract and start sending it out to people as if it is yours. And you could be, you could get into a problem if you are not properly, if you not do the necessary thing, warning your community, passing out the right information, um, giving your community um, the right guide on how they can interact with the project so that they will not be scammed by other persons. These are things that you must do within your community to protect your, your, your users from such kind of risks that are associated. Because if it happens, it will still boil down to your project as if your project was the one actually involved in such kind of situations. That is one aspect. The other aspect is in the area of um, the projects managing their um, their funds. That is under very serious issues. We've seen a lot of projects that raise funds, and the next thing you hear that they've been scammed, uh, when they've, they've been hacked, and all of those stuff. Their funds, their wallet have been hacked, and the likes. So it's a very big issue there too. So you must know how to be able to tackle all of these challenges. Because if you don't have such knowledges, and you, you, you just go in building projects uh, in the Web3 ecosystem, you, you then you might be trying to hit a very 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 big rock that might end up um, affecting your project entirely. So these are some of the risks that are involved uh, when trying to raise funds uh, in the Web three ecosystem. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much. Uh, that's like an that's really like an eye opener. Um, of course. Nothing like without its uh, challenges or that response. Being aware of these things will actually empower one the person to know what to put in place in order to protect himself, his business, and his community. Um, so back to back to Mr. Lucky. So now, 
I did like um, any specific web three funding platforms, like protocols that you recommend for startups. It is also for digital okay. and the lucky. Let's look first. Okay, so basically, I'm not good with pointing people to just um, um, rather one solution um, in terms of places where they should um, go to raise funds um, in, in regards to a particular protocol. But uh, a lot of the layer one um, related um, protocol seems to offer something of that sort, while some have a, a bit pivoted into. Um, either via a foundation methodology or via VC-based uh, type of um, um, funding um, method, but with the hope that you build your product on top of their uh, platform. I've seen... I've seen guys who decide to um, raise funds from uh, one particular place and then um, go to another over time as a result of seeing limitations with a particular uh, protocol. To be honest with you, I'm, I do not want to necessarily just um, reference one particular one um, over the other, but a lot of the layer one um, protocol give virtually everybody that opportunity to come raise funds on their platform. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for that. So I, I, I understand, like, not um, calling out any specific one. Okay. Um, what about you, Mr. S Senator? Any uh, ideas, like, any about funding platforms that startups can go to to get initial funding to start their project? All right. Uh... <laughs> If Lucky has not provided any, uh, <laughs> you imagine that a lawyer would, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so um, uh, seriously speaking, uh, I think that I can understand why uh, persons would be a bit cautious about specifically mentioning uh, platforms that people should go to for the purpose of um, accessing funds or you can have for fundraising platforms. But um, this is not to say that there are no um, platforms out there that are in safe. Um, I have seen platforms that are um, strictly Web3 based platforms um, who, that leverage uh, the decentralization of blockchain brings to bring a bit more transparency and trust as well as security to the um, um, funding space. There are a number of them like that on a platform. Um, a careful and cautious Google guide, uh, Google Google search or uh, search engine um, work can you know, point you at some of them. When you see any of those, you can then reach out to Lucky or um, Stanley Golomo to confirm <laughs> if you're on the right page. <laughs> then um, uh, I also know that there are those who are not... Uh, really Web3, but they are those playing in the Web2 space trying to uh, get funding or at least increase opportunities for founders in the Web3 space. Those are also there. These are mainly um, groups collaborating to ensure that um, underserved communities like the Web3 community um, do not suffer um, scarcity of funding because um, essentially, the Web3 space is seen from a Web3 and I'm sorry, from a Web2 and Web1 web angle as a high risk space. So when it comes to getting funding in that space, things can really be a, a little tricky and quite um, dangerous or highly risky. So a lot of people are really, really, really looking at how to navigate that area by minimizing all the risk as much as possible. So you can also look out for those Web2 based um, um, funding platforms that focus on helping Web3 founders to um, access funds. I'm sure you'll find um, a, a number of them out there. Um, just to mention um, something related to this is that we, in looking at platforms to get um, funding from for the purpose of Web3, um, we need to be conscious of the fact um, that right now, generally, even outside the Web3 space, um, there has been, um, we have seen an increasing decrease 
in um, funding going into the space, right? Uh, especially sure. even the web three space. So for instance, if you look at, hello? No, no, no I'm following, sorry. <laughs> following. Okay, okay. So if you look closer at the, at the web three space over the years, you find that in the, current, in the current quarter that we have, which is about to close now in the, in the next two weeks or, or less, um, quarter three, 2023, we have um, one of the lowest um, funding rates so far. I mean, if you go back to quarter one of 2022, for instance, we, the Web3 space was able to attract up to um, over $8 billion in funding globally. Um, that came down a bit in quarter two uh, of 2022 to just uh, less, just less than eight billion, right? But still, be above six billion dollars. Um, if it, I, I looked at the charts very closely and realized that it kept decreasing, so quarter three also decreased to um, something less than four billion dollars. So you can see that within 2022, last year alone, um, funding has dropped from over eight point something billion dollars to less than four billion dollars. That that means there must be factors behind these things. And from then on till now, as we speak, quarter three, Web three was able to get less than um, less than one billion dollars. This quarter three, we have less than one billion dollars in the entire Web three space. I mean, I, I can, I can, I can remember two large um, investments in the Web three space this this um, quarter. One was um, by Bitgo, which is a crypto custody platform um, based in California. Um, one is um, an Indian based Web three security firm called um, um, Zyber three six five. This these two Bitgo and Zyber three six five were able to raise $100 million each, right, each. And these are the two largest um, Web3 funding we have seen in quarter, quarter two. So these two alone have swallowed about $200 million, while small, small other deals are, um, is, is just cut across other, other cut across about, about $700 million or, 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 yeah, around that range. And the interesting thing is that it's not just the funding that is dropping, the deals are also dropping. So I, I noticed that from about 500 deals in a quarter, we, are, we now have in the current quarter less than 200 deals in the space as far as funding is concerned. So it means that not only is the size of the funding dropping, the, um, the, the perhaps the offers uh, the people bringing the products out there and those interested in the products are, is also falling, which, which really is a probing question. Um, the question then is, what's really the issue? Is it that there is now a growing lack of trust in Web3 founders and their projects? Or is it just a general thing since we know that globally uh, economies are slowing down uh, most of the places this funding come from, uh, which is mainly in the West, uh, we have seen that the economies are contracting. Uh, they are not expansionary at this point. The only places you might see not contracting as fast will be emerging markets. And ironically, emerging markets like, um, say, Brazil, like India, like um, in Nigeria as well, to some extent, um, you'll find that there is... There, there is relatively lack of um, um, regulatory support in those areas. And it's not just the regulations that are slowing down funding in these areas. Um, there are also lack of um, innovation support systems compared to what you have in places like the US and places like maybe um, to some extent Dubai, Middle East and all that, or, or even Asia, Southeastern, Eastern Asia, especially, you find that these guys, relative to emerging markets, these guys have structured support systems. So you can have accelerators, you have incubators, 
Um, the hubs are there to give you that support. You know, so funding shouldn't just be about cash. You know, funding should too should be about uh, access to infrastructure, as access to network, access to um, um, advisory as well. We don't get a lot of that. So when we have too much money chasing, um, um, you know, projects here and there, the the downside is that some founders will lose focus and not be able to build sustainable projects, which eventually will still come back to alt the entire industry. So why is the industry right now, the Web3 space globally, looking at less than $1 billion in an entire quarter? Well, that $1 billion, you find a fintech um, platform somewhere in the Web2 space, maybe a payment company or a switch or processor could just raise that, that much as well within a quarter. So it's not looking very good. It, it appears to be a question mark on the entire Web3 space. Maybe it's time to go back to the drawing board and see whether uh, the issues are from the innovations we build in the first place, whether they are really solving problems or basically just leveraging um, um, uh, the fascination, you know, the momentary fascination when it comes to certain use cases in this space. Right. Um, I recall that a NFTs, for instance, non fungible tokens, you know, got a lot of interest um, about two years ago. Um, and there was so much, the, a lot of money was pumped into that space, big time, billions of dollars. Um, two years later, most of the stuff that were paid for uh, in, in, in great amount or with great sums have been, have lost um, value. So why are those things losing value? Is it that the inherent solutions in those technological, um, so in those products, have they been lost as well? Or is it that there were never solutions in the first place? It was all about um, hype. So we really need to look at those things. From an innovation point of view, I, I, I can imagine what guys like Stanley Golomo from um, Rota Cash, you know, Lemuel and others would be thinking. You know, because sometimes when things go bad, you know, like this, it's it's sometimes the the result of the collective failure of the industry to regulate itself. It's not all the time we have to wait for the governments to help with these things. We need to take responsibility. Decentralization is not free town. Even if in free town, nothing is free. So we, we need to understand that with decentralization comes more responsibility. When you say that you want to become your own bank, it means that the level of responsibility you have will be way bigger, you know, and higher compared to the traditional platforms. The reason why people need Web3, Web2 and Web1 is because they can't trust themselves to manage certain things alone. So you see um, centralized exchanges, for instance, getting a lot of web, uh, a lot of use, use, user base you know, expanding all the time because people don't trust themselves enough. How many of us here can responsibly manage a trust wallet, knowing that whatever goes wrong, you're on your own? I mean, some of us here, when we hear that there's no customer care on a platform, <laughs> it can be very scary. Like, you mean I can call Satoshi and say I've lost my Bitcoin? And they say, well, what are you guys doing? Are you guys crazy or smoking ganja? So it's, it's, it's just really... It means that we have to take responsibility. So I don't di digress too much from the main thing. Funding is serious business. And um, when it comes to funding, it's not charity. Um, there may be those who have a lot of money and train money around, but it's really going to be hurting the, the entire space if money is going to the wrong places. Because those wrong places will, will come back to um, characterize the industry in a, in a wrong way. So I think, and this is my own, if you ask me now, uh, <laughs> Upaka, whether I, I still have any name I want to mention that you should go to, I would say this. I think that sometimes we rely on others too much rather than relying on ourselves. Um, I was the president of um, the Stakeholders in Blockchain Technology Association of Nigeria, CBAN, 
which is essentially Nigeria's blockchain association for about two years. Before being president, I was secretary for a year. Before being secretary, I was vice, vice uh, chairman in charge of policy and regulations for about a year. So just in, in the space of four years, I have watched um, how the space has been growing, you know, um, from the point of view of CBAN as an association. And one of the things that um, I think that we need to start doing a bit more is setting up structures that will enable us to leverage community to crowdfund projects that we're able to say, this is the project in the space. For instance, is it out of place for, or will it be out of place for associations or an association to get together and uh, leverage its community and say, um, Rota Cash, um, we have found that Rota Cash, uh, Cash's solution um, appears to be one that will be sustainable. We want to support Rota Cash and see how they can um, grow. Therefore, rather than having Rota Cash looking for funding all over the place, we want to leverage the power of our community to raise adequate funding for Rota Cash. And these are the contents and conditions for anyone who wants to access this fund. You reach out to the community and project a picture. And this is what we want to do. All the time we say that certain countries, including many African countries, don't have infrastructure. We don't have web, web um, um, layer one solutions. Even layer two is questionable. We are on layer three and we're still struggling. We have essentially turned to a consumer market. Who are the innovators? Who are building the systems, the structures, right? It's really not about buying the Lamborghini and the rest of them. The real Lamborghini we need to take us from where we are to where we want to go are ideas that we have been able to concretize by coming together to support ourselves. And so this doesn't sound funny. Like uh, like a Joe Biden complaining about what, uh, about the U.S. being bad, that would be ridiculous. So I'll say that I would, this is a challenge to everyone. Uh, before I left office, there was this um, project that I and the uh, executive council in CBAN introduced, and I would like to challenge um, members here, especially those from the CBAN community, to go back to the leaders and ask. What is happening with backfeed, blockchain and crypto funding, innovation and development, backfeed? If you go to the CBAN website, backfeed is right there. And the idea, the vision, I'm on CBAN website right now. The vision is to position local innovators um, in emerging in. Right? And the mission is to serve as a leading platform through which new and upcoming blockchain technology innovators will have the opportunity to access adequate support, including funding in a structured manner towards the development of their blockchain technology projects. To realize this mission, Backfeed is a, is, is, was supposed to partner with incubators, those ops, venture capitalists, and other strategic stakeholders who support blockchain and crypto innovation funding and development. So I think that we, we, we are not leveraging or maximizing the power we have as a community. Everyone is trying to run in silos. We need to come together and crowdfund you know, solutions we believe are sustainable. So um, it, to wrap up my answer to that question, if you want to know the, the next funding platform to go to, it is where we all are. We need to come a, together and leverage what we have to be able to build the future together. That is a more sustainable development for me. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much, um, Senator. Thank you so much. Like, that was like super eye-opening for me, an eye-opener for me, really, um, especially the crowdfunding at the level of the community, because this is going to like help make us build what we actually need, you know, a Nigeria-centric and Africa-centric solution instead of just uh, a random project there out there that might not, that will not really or might not really benefit us. And I like the part where you, you know, you, you emphasized on the fact that funding is not just money, really like, you know, the advisory, the infrastructure, the 
you know, the support system. There's a lot of things that that, that can, you know, push a, um, a startup from zero level to actually delivering real value that the community really needs. And this is really an eye-opener for all of us. So funding is, funding is where we all are. And uh, I think that we really need to like take up, take up that um, solution that Siban uh, already put in progress, right? Um, thank you so much, Mr. Senito. Thank you, thank you, um, thank you so much for that. So this 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 really puts Rosa Cash in limelight, really, because uh, um, this is something that they are already doing, right? The, it, it's it's already present the solution that they have on t on the table, something that it's already working. Of course, we know these things from like web two already, and then we have the web three system. And I believe that one of one of the things I believe that is affecting, let's say, uh, let's say funding generally in web three space is that there are a lot of uh, will I say a lot of um, sorting out that needs to happen. Like we need to like finally begin. To think beyond, like you said, think beyond the money. Start thinking, be thinking value, be value driven, be solution driven, be uh, you know, actually build something. Like if we as Africans now, African like maybe developers and all, let's start thinking about building solutions that Africa really, really needs, and not just uh, something just because of the Lambo, <laughs> the Lambo, for Lambo's sake. So uh, thank you so much, um, all of our speakers. Uh, we've, we've taken like an hour, so as if you like get to the point around the top it's really been interesting conversations this evening um yes yeah, so just before we uh, round it up so um rosa cash has this like jasper nfts right jasper nfts and plus the whole um cooperative solution that they are bringing to the table so i want um mr lemo to just like throw light because I think at some point, uh, Senator mentioned NFTs and all. So, but I want to hear how this Jasper NFT goes. I, I, I read from this site that it has, you know, having these NFTs gives you zero interest um, within the those uh, circles when you're getting funded and all of that. So, how does this really, really work, uh, Mr. Lemuel? as this creates an opportunity for people to access funding for what they're doing. The NFT use cases are enormous. Although it comes with its own NFT so far has been speculative. It's quite it's quite um, new and novel it's innovation and it's quite speculative and, uh, with multiple use cases ranging from ranging from you know um, fractional ownership of real assets, auctions and sales, that's for artists, taking a yield generation for DeFi, gaming and virtual world like assets, the digital assets of so the games, connectables, tokenized, and then governance show making so quite so far. But I think what we are what we do is uh, deploy NFT on a decentralized um, funding circles. Um, in this area, in terms of crowdfunding and in terms of taking and geo generation, so in our ecosystem, we have three breeds of NFTs. The first one is the Jasper that you just mentioned. That's like entry point. That's like a digital ID that allows you allows every user to now have access to our ecosystem, which includes getting, uh, you know, um, zero interest lending or in a you joining a credit circle. So in that case, one needs the first breed of NFTs, which is a Jasper NFT. So this is an digital identity. It's access to security and then it solves the issue of KYC. And of course we're in a decentralized world. We cannot usually really do KYC. Except we adopt AI, but with the power of AI and these NFTs. It enables every user to ensure that once you come into the system for DeFi circle lending um, activities, the system is actually safe because that's like, you know, 
a security, a, an identity, so to say. So once you have it, you're now able to upgrade it to the second breed NFT. The second breed NFT, which is Onyx, that allows every user who wants to get their interest lending to stake it. Once they stake it, they can actually participate in any sec any available uh, circle, contribution or lending circle, ranging from using any currencies, ranging from hundred dollars to as much, and then using any currency, any of the digital assets like maybe stable coins, Bitcoin, our native Rota tokens, or any of them that is available and open. So in that case, we are not. This is, I mean, other users are not bothered with KYC. They understand that for you to have access to it, you very stick your asset, which is the NFT, the security, as an identity. So enable system to be safe and sustainable. And then why staking too? In the course of why carry activities, the NFT also yield using uh, token, uh, native token as like, you know, staking and earning from the liquidity pool and also use USDT in terms of, I'm sorry, BNB in terms of uh, weekly minting of the NFT. So it's a multiple system, um, um, like say multiple earning opportunity for every year who wants to use our ecosystem or continue to the ecosystem. So that's what we are using our NFTs for. All right, all right. Um, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Manuel. So um, you can get this NFT by just participating in the activity on, um, on our pin, the pin post on our handle. So just go there, you can get this NFT and join the Rota ecosystem. So you don't have to like take extra time. So just one um, final word from uh, all of our speakers, just an advice that you can give to entrepreneurs who wants to leverage Web3. What advice would you give them? I know um, Senator really gave us like, you know, a very uh, huge set of, of things that we you can pick different things from. But then just one last word, set words to entrepreneurs looking to leverage Web3 for funding. Mr. Golomo. Okay, so my advice is um, is simple. Um, do not give up. Uh, I always tell them um, projects building on the Web3 ecosystem, do not give up. Um, there is always opportunity out there. Um, Senator and Lucky has mentioned a lot of uh, these opportunities, even if they did not mention them specifically. Um, that is why in the crypto world, they always say, do your own research. So you, you, it's important, you, once you come into the space, there are a lot of research materials that are available for you to be able to come around to see areas where you can actually get access to funding as a project. And we've been in this space, we've been building, we've built uh, farm chain finance since, since 2019, and here we are building water cash. Um, so we've seen uh, what's really happening within the space. And so we encourage every builder, if you are coming in new to the space or you've been in the space, do not give up. Keep working hard. Keep reiterating your products and uh, keep um, making sure that you build something that is sustainable and valuable. Um, there are a lot of opportunities that are there. There are grants. There are um, and direct funding. There are crowdfundings. Like uh, Sinatra talked about earlier, I talked about crowdfunding through Web3. There are those opportunities there. For example, we have the likes of, um, um, sorry, I have to call some names. We have the likes of DX Sales. We have the likes of Pink Sales. Uh, these are decentralized crowdfunding platforms. So if you're able to meet certain criteria there, you could be able to raise some funds. If you actually, if your project, that is if your project actually has a token that is part of your project. But if it doesn't have a token that is part of the project, then it will be difficult for you to be able to raise funds on such decentralized platform because there are strictly platforms, crowdfunding platforms, where your project must have tokens that will be used to generate those funds from those platforms. 
So but you must meet certain criteria. So one, your product, your product must have a uh, um, solid foundation. It must have solid use case. If you are actually building with tokens, your tokens must actually have a purpose, not just building tokens for token's sake or just to raise money that you want to dump on the community. There should be real value for your token. If you are building NFTs, your NFT should have real value. Like what we are doing with other cash, you're not just building NFTs, some JPEG stuff. No, you are building NFTs that actually has real value. These are collateralized NFTs. So they're, they're not just NFTs. So whatever NFTs you're having within the Ruta Cash ecosystems, these NFTs are backed, they are insured, they are they are collateralized, meaning that they are liquid. Whereby if a user decides that he wants to uh, liquidate this asset tomorrow, he can actually liquidate this asset without any fear of anything at all. So these are some of the things that you must actually put in place to ensure that whatever thing you are doing, you must create real value whatever you're doing. So if you go to any of these platforms, you are sure of doing your KYC, you're doing, you're doxing your, your team members, you are doing proper contract audits, all of these things. You must pass through these processes and ensure so that once once, once people, users come to these platforms that they are, that wants to contribute for projects, when they, when they are able to support your project and see that your project meets all of these criteria, definitely to build a little level of trust. And you could raise some kind of form that will enable you to actually build your product for you. So these are some very important steps that any project that is trying to raise funds on Web3 must take. Then applying the other steps being suggested by Senator, by locking, ensuring that uh, you, 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 you build value for your community and also for any other person that will be joining your community to participate in your project you must create real value solid projects and i bet you with consistency you definitely succeed in raising funds thank you so much for that, Stanley. um it, you know now to like um, um our speakers sorry our audience uh i be, i believe you guys have been following just in case you have any questions if you might spell like one minute or two just take your questions while um, our speakers and um, you give their uh final words final advice to entrepreneurs you can drop your questions and we can try as much as possible to attend to them in the littlest time possible so just if you have any questions just drop it and they will attend to them so um Mr. Lucky, which advice would you give to entrepreneurs trying to leverage what they for free? Okay, so my advice to entrepreneurs lever to le in leveraging Web3 is to take advantage of communities. So um, over time, uh, Web3 have uh, become that new kid in the block that uh, traditional um, companies are not interested much in, but uh, they've been able to galvanize themselves to start forming communities. And for any entrepreneurs who want to take advantage of it is to leverage on that same community. That's one. The second one will be um, expanding your knowledge in the industry. For a lot of times, uh, people seem to get comfortable over time. Uh, after a while, when some sort of enthusiasm uh, dies down, either for those of them who are more passionate in the crypto space or for those of them who are more passionate, let's say, within the NFTs or DeFi space, whether as a developer or somebody who's building. So it's important that as things continue to um, grow and change, you should continue to always learn. I likely think that um, as we will go into the bull markets, hopefully come 20, this is not a, a financial advice or trading advice, but um, as we likely go into the bull markets come 2024, we might likely see more new trend come up, either in the area of regenerative finance, which I think have not really um, been given much spotlight of late, or social finance. So basically, regenerative finance focusing around climate change and Web3 infused together. Uh, while some people might not be of the school of thought that Climate change is a real thing, a real concern, but clearly there's a, a global attention that has been given to climate change. And what three is leveraging that by utilizing what they call regenerative finance or what we call refi. So I'm believing that for anybody who continues to feed more on knowledge or um, continue to learn um, newer trends, they would likely tap into the opportunities that abound in that area. So knowledge, um, um, continuous knowledge, quest for gaining more knowledge is one. And the second part is leveraging communities. So communities are very important 
in our space. So these are my two advice for anyone and that's um, who's interested in wanting to raise funds within Web3. Thank you so much, Mr. Lucky. Thank you, thank you for dropping the alpha. <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you for that community and uh, a lot, lots and lots and lots of self education. So, um, Senator, any words, any advice for entrepreneurs? Thank you. Um, in addition to what uh, my fantastic fear speakers have said as well, um, Lucky um, Stanley as well have said. Um, I think that it is also essential and important for entrepreneurs to focus on the problems and not the tools, right? Um, when you go to almost 90% of um, the web space, as far as Web3 is concerned, from apps to websites to social media pages, um, telegram communities, the language of Web3 is too, um, is, is almost too technical. Um, go to any home page of most Web3 um, solutions and um, service providers. The emphasis on the fact that it is Web3 and it is blockchain and it is decentralization, traceability, consensus system, all that stuff is too high. It's too high. Um, in my experience working as a lead partner and head of blockchain and virtual assets at my firm, uh, at Infusion Lawyers, a law firm, what I've noticed, you know, is um, uh, and I've always emphasized to some of the people we work with is that we need to solve the problems. And just when you solve problems, that's when the values will come, the value you're looking for will come. Um, it is easy to get lost in the hype, you know, in the space because of all the high-falutine languages in blockchain. Um, the what I see happening in the future and in the nearest future, for that matter, is we will not essentially have platforms that provide one thing. We're going to be having more of embedded finance. You go to a platform and it doesn't say anything about blockchain or crypto or decentralization. It's just solving a problem for you. Um, I use a virtual card that is backed by stable coin on a platform that looks like a Web2 platform. Um, whenever I use that virtual card to pay for services on, on other platforms like Netflix and, and all, Netflix doesn't even know or give a damn whether it's a USDT that is backing that MasterCard. They don't even have an idea. And the platform selling that solution is not even throwing it on people's faces that this is blockchain, um, it is called stablecoin, it is uh, um, your fiat backed one-on-one, -on -one, but all that language, it just solves a problem. Once you solve those problems, the market will come after you. You, you will be hot in the market as it were and things will be more sustainable. Most of the things that happen around volatility, most times I have to say, of course, apart from the economic realities globally, I find that it is because um, sometimes in trying to get the community to um, buy or, or um, yeah, to buy in, you know, into our projects or platforms, we raise expectations way too high without managing them. And then at the end of the, of the day, it, only, it doesn't only hurt the investors or users, it hurts you yourself, the founders, as well as the project itself. Because when things do not meet expectations, people begin to have that sense of distrust, suspicion, and then it can't sustain anything for you. You find yourself moving to the next project. How long are founders going to move to the next project. What about the last project? What happened? Are there, uh, is there data we are gathering to know what went wrong and be able to solve those things? Is it enough to go build another project and then repeat another, the same mistake all over again? It's time for us, both as founders and users, to begin to 
do things a bit differently. If we have to borrow from the Web2 space, fantastic. Web2 space is, is, is not all altogether great, but there are also great things that they have that Web3 can leverage. I think all that will help us build a more sustainable um, ecosystem that is all about trust. Remember, we are decentralizing trusts. You know, we're not supposed to destroy that trust. So um, I think that's really it for me. So if we want to manage volatility better, all the fraud, hacking, and the legal uncertainties in the space because regulators are still in the dark about what's going on. I think that we need to work more closely and also be able to be more open, right? We should be able to take feedback, whether negative or positive, as long as they are constructive. We should take them and learn from them. Also, lastly, to entrepreneurs and founders in the space, um, let us also um, have the courage, right, to be able to um, say the truth to ourselves and then be able to get better from there. I, I, I have found that it appears founders or entrepreneurs, some of them, like to hear the same thing all, all over again. Uh, you, are the, you are the Satoshi Nakamoto in the market. You are the this. We just want hype from morning till night while we are not building those values. I was in Bayes University, um, uh, Abuja, the capital of uh, Nigeria, yesterday. I'm speaking from Lagos now. And um, a former director and um, DG, what was it called? CEO of NOTAP. You know, NOTAP in, in Nigeria is a government agency in charge of uh, regulating technology transfer. And then he was asked, where are we in, in Africa in terms of the um, innovations and the rest of them. And he said, we're nowhere. When I was giving a lecture to those who were there on innovation and how to protect them, I also, they noticed that I kept referring to, um, I mean, citing examples from, uh, from markets outside Africa. And someone asked courageously and openly, why haven't you mentioned any Nigerian project in, in the space? Or that is already doing this. And I asked the question, go to the Nigerian Stock Exchange and ask me any of the top 10 companies that uses AI, for instance, or blockchain, or quantum computing, or other emerging technologies, big data, IoT. The answer is zero. So if we don't really do all this stuff we talk about, who is going to talk about them? So that's my challenge. I, I think that it's time we stop talking and get to work. I think that we need to um, empower people and not destroy people. If in Africa we're looking at about 1.3 billion people and they, everyone is saying that there's poverty, um, Nigeria, for instance, overtook India as the poverty capital of the world recently, you know, due to all the bad things in governance. Um, I think that where three founders should be able to take it upon themselves to open up opportunities for people and uh, in the markets. I'm not saying you have to be savior of the world. I'm just saying focus on those solutions. Forget the hype and build, build, because it's the solutions we need. If we say that Africa needs blockchain the most, then it should be seen that Africa is building blockchain the most. Or if you're not building, at least leverage technologies that are from out there in a manner that is more localized so that we can have a more sustainable market. I am for the long term. I'm not for pumps and dumps. And people who, are, who, who I also have around my network understand this. This is where blockchain really gets to matter. It is what we make of it that we get at the end of the day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Lockie. Thank you so much, Mr. Stanley. Thank you so much, Mr. Senator. And um, I think I'm going to give the floor now to Mr. Lemuel to just close the shop for us. I think no, there's no question here. Um, there's no question here. All right. So, uh, Mr. Lemuel, just say the grace for us. 
All right. Um, thank you so much once again for this session. I want to sincerely appreciate all those who waited patiently and listened to us. And of course, I'm sure they must have learned one or two, one or two, my word. Lastly, I think I want to get the waiting. I want to our focus is on solution, which is one of the pain points in Africa, and not just Africa, across the, across the globe, is the fact that certain constituencies, if I may put it that way, certain 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 uh, part of the population uh, are locked out of the traditional financing system because of uh, the attempts on the bank, non-bank. So we keep innovating. We keep, you know, adjusting, setting the cell, and look out for new trends and how to better, you know, our solutions to be able to, you know, solve these pain points for users. Basically, the unbanked and the unbanked. Thank you so much, Mr. Lemuel. You know, I, I'm really glad for the way the direction that this nice conversation went because um, it's sort of um, part of the reason why we are setting up like educational series and even our community that's going to come up, um, our Valley of Dev Africa, is to actually bring people in who are going to learn how to solve Africa's specific problem with the blockchain. You know, I can totally relate with what we all shared this evening. And uh, these are like, these are basically, you know, one thing about Valley Cup is that we are directly um, in connection with people who don't understand what all these things are about. And just like when Mr. Uh, Senator said, he, um, we, it's someone that is using, uh, I think he mentioned with MasterCard and all these other platforms, two platforms. They're not really, what they're seeing is the problem is solving for them. They're not, they're not seeing the codes. They're not seeing the technology behind it. They're just seeing a plug and play where I have this problem or I have this and I have this need and this is just simply solving it for me. And that's it. You know, we need to like actually really, really get to that point where maybe it, it means that maybe most of us have not really understood exactly what blockchain is solving or we don't have enough words yet to translate all this BB grammar into um, actual relatable solutions for the average person in the society. So we're hoping to bring in a lot of, um, bring back a lot of educational series from the foundation and then bring in young people, go have lots of young persons who can actually get, um, get busy with learning how this is, what are the, what are the Africa-centric problems? What are the Africa-specific problems? Nigeria-specific problems? And how can we use all these available tools? And then, of course, this is where funding also comes in because sometimes to actually build the solution, we still need funding. So this is where we are, have the likes of Rotacash and every other solution in this space. So I want to really thank every one of you our highly esteemed speakers, Mr. Lucky, Mr. Stanley, Mr. Senator, Mr. Lemuel, and our beloved audience for sharing your time and insights with us this evening. Really, I, even myself, I'm going to go back to this and take a lot of notes. I was trying to like do a lot of mental notes, try to grab my pen and put some stuff down because, um, like um, we've all said, beyond just plenty, plenty talk we've been doing for years, we need to actually start doing stuff and contribute in, the, in our only two way. So thank you everybody for joining us this evening. Thank you for bringing up your time. Um, just make sure, uh, do well to follow all the speakers, follow all the speakers, follow Valley Cup, turn on notifications and all of that to see what we are all bringing to the table and how we are bringing all these solutions uh, to bear. And um, don't forget to engage with our pin post which is uh, Rotacash Finance. They're sponsoring our community to learn how to become career ready, career ready for in the Web3 space. We need people who are thinking solution, solution, value first. That's how have always been our slogan at Value Corp, value first before you even think about the money. So that has always been our culture. So uh, do well to engage there and um, we'll see you next time.
next phase, same platform. Thank you, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you all for coming. Really appreciate. Good night. This space was downloaded via spacesdown.com. Visit to download your spaces today.